beaver and moose, and I thought there must be an avian uh, candidate in this contest. And as I thought about birds, I thought, geez, it must be self-evident, the Canada goose. It's got to be the Canada goose. Uh, and then somebody said balloon, and I thought that was, that was a, a pretty good suggestion. So you imagine my surprise, everybody's surprise, when somebody else held a contest and the gray jay was somehow chosen as the national bird. Have you ever heard of the gray jay? Yeah? So here's Jody Allaire. He's going to extol the virtues of the gray jay. Thanks. Thanks so much, Eddie. Hello, everyone. Um, really great to be here. This is my first Idea City experience, and I have to say it's been a really amazing couple of days, very inspiring speakers, and uh, I'm really happy to talk about one of my favorite birds. Uh, I'm a birder, lifelong birder. I know there's others out there in the audience as well. It's okay to be birders. Um, we're in. We're the in crowd, really. Um, this bird is really quite something. I, what I'm going to do is take a step back and talk about how we got to the gray jay being, uh, being recommended as a national bird, but also talk about why we should be paying attention to birds and how birds as symbols can play major conservation role in our, in our society. So let's get started. How do you go about selecting a bird with all the birds that we have, you know, 450 species of birds. How do you go about selecting one that represents Canada and Canadians? Uh, does the bird have to be found coast to coast? Does the bird have to uh, be a year-round resident? Does it need to apologize constantly at the drop of a hat? <laughs> does it like double doubles and donuts? Um, I'll come back to that point. Um, uh, all things to consider. All right? And, you know, early on, and for a lot of people, there, there, was, there was a dark horse in this race, an underdog, an underbird, <laughs> the, the gray jay. And uh, for those people that are birders and work in the bird field, this was such a logical selection, the, the gray jay. The gray jay wanted to be Canada's national bird. Uh, it has every right to be. It has so many attributes that make it a perfect fit for being Canada's national bird. But the gray jay had competition. All right? Here we go. Here are sort of the, the shortlist contenders. Now, um, this really all got going um, a couple years ago with uh, Canadian Geographic. Um, started this whole process of uh, trying to get engaged Canadians through social media and through essay submissions of what they thought uh, a representative bird for Canada would be. And it was amazing. The response from this was incredible. So many people talking about birds and sharing their love for birds. And in many ways, the process was, uh, well, it was in some ways even more important than the outcome. You know, the process of everyone engaged in talking about birds I thought was really fantastic. Here are the, the real kind of the top shortlist in terms of uh, being a contender, okay? The cheeky and cheerful black-capped chickadee, all right? Wonderful birds. We have the very pesky Canada goose, all right? Uh, and then, of course, you've got the mysterious and absolutely beautiful snowy owl, right? And then we've got the loon, the iconic common loon. Um, those are some real contenders. Um, and one stage of the, of the voting process, um, well, one stage of the process of trying to get the recommendation, um, the common loon won the popular vote. You know, the majority of people saw the common loon or voted for the common loon. Um, and really, it's, it is a good selection. Right? Uh, they are iconic. They are a symbol of wilderness. I'm not sure if how many people have experienced like listening to a common loon up north, but it's so evocative, and it so really puts you in a different place when you hear it. And, it's, and to me, really, the sound of the wilderness. But you could also make an argument that the common loon's you know, a little bit overexposed. Right? You know, we see loons a lot already. You know, it's, uh, it's already the provincial bird of Ontario, so that's a little bit awkward. Right? Um, it's on our dollar coin, right, the loony. So, the, you know, the loon is out there. The loon is there. People know about it. Maybe it's time for a fresher, newer symbol. Maybe we're at a point now that we want to, you know, take another look and come up with a bird, uh, another bird that can really capture the imagination of, uh, of Canadians across the country. And so Canadian Geographic, after lots of consultation, um, including uh, us at Bird Studies Canada, we were the national conservation partner in this process, uh, they recommended that the common loon 
or sorry, that the gray jay should be <laughs> the national bird. Slip, right? And, uh, and I think this is actually a really good choice. A lot of people were shocked. There were magazine articles. There was, it was a scandal that the gray jay was, was selected here. And I thought, this was all great, right? This is all, as someone who's a birder and a conservationist, you know, this is so great that the people are talking about this. So the gray jay was recommended. It's obviously not an official national uh, symbol yet. Uh, maybe someday it will. Um, and I'm going to get you acquainted with this amazing bird here and, and sort of show you, tell you a few things about why I think this is actually a really great choice and why we should be paying attention. I'm going to start off with a question. How many people in this room have ever seen a gray jay? Raise your hand. A few of you. Yes. Thanks, guys. All right. Good. All right. <laughs> Good. Okay, so most of you haven't. Great. All right, so this is solid Idea City homework here after this, is, is get out there, get up to Algonquin Park. It's only a couple hours. You can see it quite easy. Um, the Grey Jay has, is known by several different names. Uh, it's got an Aboriginal name, Whiskey Jack, uh, which is translated to Whiskey Jack. Maybe you've heard of that name before. It used to be called the Canada Jay. The Latin name is Perisurius canadensis. And they can be found right across, right across Canada in every province and territory. And they sort of have that over many of the other birds uh, that, were, that were being nominated. Um, and in, if you look at their entire North American range, they, they're, the bulk of their whole North American range is within Canada. All right? um, so they're also in the family Corvidae. Okay, so a little bit of science talk here. All right, that's all right. All right, they're in the family Corvidae, so they're in the same bird family as crows and ravens and blue jays. Right? And why is that important? Well, this family of birds, the corvids, are the smartest group of birds in the world. They are extremely intelligent uh, animals. And if you spend any time with American crows or up north with common ravens and you try to outsmart them, like try to keep them out of your garbage, you're going to lose that battle basically every time. Right? They're very, very smart birds, this group of birds. And gray jays are very, very smart. And they have incredible adaptations for surviving the harsh Canadian winter. All right. So as I said before, where do you find gray jays? Well, they are really a species of Canada's boreal forest. So they're found right across the country, right? and you find them in boreal or coniferous forest regions. Um, you also find them in the mountain forests out west. You don't really see them in southern Ontario. Right? Uh, they are a more northern bird. But if you look across the country, you, know, you will find gray jays in these, in these areas. So what makes this bird so special? And I think, for me, this image does it. All right? Yes. How, how much more Canadian can you get, really? <laughs> right? Like, they nest in the winter. All right? Talk about really taking winter by the, I know there's a moose analogy here. I'm just going to leave it. But anyway, they really, they really um, are incredible that they can do this. They nest in February, March. They can sit on eggs uh, in minus 30 degree temperatures. I'm not sure how many of you have tried to sit on a nest in minus 30 degree temperatures before, it is not easy, all right? It's, it's tough, it's very tough. And they can pull it off and look really chic and super cool doing it, right? Really amazing looking birds. So they nest in the winter. This is, seems very counterintuitive to survival, right? But in fact, it really works because what they do is they spend the rest of the, uh, the time, rest of the year, especially the spring and summer, they spend that time rounding up food. And one of, and I mentioned they're really smart, right? What they do is that they take food, they gather up food through the year, and they store food throughout the forest in food caches. And they do this all year long, right before the, the nesting season. And in the winter time, when they're nesting, they rely on all that stored food. They have thousands of food caches throughout the forest, and they remember where they are. That's how they survive. Talk about an, a really intelligent and ingenious uh, problem-solving bird, right? That is really incredible that they, can pull, that they can pull that off. They also are quite social, and, and often you'll have the dominant young um, from, from a nesting pair will actually stick around with the parents and they'll kind of work as a, as a big family. And, uh, and even though that young bird uh, isn't allowed near the chicks in the nest, once those chicks fledge, the young from the year before will actually help feed and raise those chicks. Right? Really, uh, really fantastic behavior with these particular birds. Okay. And the other thing I think gray jays really have going for them is that they are personable. They are smart. And it may, I'm sure some of you have had this experience up north. If you haven't, 
you need to go have this experience. Uh, Gray Jays often will approach people and, and take your food, really. Um, it's like, oh, that's so endearing. It is, actually, right? They will, you'll be looking for them, and all of a sudden, you'll turn around, and they're following you on the trail, and they want to, uh, you know, and they'll, they'll feed right out of your hand, and, uh, you know, sometimes they'll try to take food out of your bag. Um, but it's, it's this really fantastic opportunity to create a personal connection with, with the natural world, right? And that's something that Gray Jays can really do, all right? And having this experience uh, you know, if it doesn't change you, if it doesn't change your perspective on things, there might be something wrong, I don't know, because it should, right? All right, so I'm gonna take a step out of this and talk for a couple minutes about why birds. It, it seems to come up uh, through my conversations the past few days here with people, um, and uh, that, this question invariably comes up. You well, know, why birds? You know, why are you so interested in birds? You know, it's like, well, here it is, here's the short. Um, how could you not be interested in something that looks as awesome as this, right? This is the Rufus Hummingbird, okay, just to throw out an example. They are beautiful. They have fascinating behaviors. You can find them everywhere, and they are really engaging. Now, from a conservation perspective, birds are one of the best indicators of environmental change um, that we have, right? So from a conservation, as a conservation tool, monitoring bird populations plays a really big role in, uh, in how we look at the Earth. There are a lot of, <laughs> there are a lot of things in the world that are, that are changing, whether it's through habitat loss and food shortage and climate change, and we've heard a lot of people say this. These things have a direct impact on birds. We see reduction in populations in birds with these threats. But these things also involve us. We are connected here. So if we're monitoring bird populations, um, it's also telling us about what we're doing to the world and how we're being impacted, even if we don't realize it at the time, right? And of course, birding, you know, and getting out there and looking at birds is a really popular thing, all right? Maybe you're not there yet, right? But you'll get there, <laughs> all right? I, there, you know, there is a stereotype that, you know, a birder is, you know, have to be like a retired English teacher, you know, to be a birder. <laughs> Um, I, I totally reject that notion. As a, as a childhood birder, you know, I totally reject that notion. It can be whatever you want it to be. Everyone can be a birder, and there are lots of us out there. There are millions of Canadians uh, uh, are into birds, right? About a quarter of the Canadian population uh, partake in some kind of backyard bird feeding or watch birds in their backyard, right? That's, a, that's 25% of the Canadian population are connected to birds, right? So there is, there is some power to paying attention to birds, all right? And how are birds doing? Well, a lot are in really big trouble, you know? And another reason we should be paying attention and perhaps have a symbol of a bird and to represent the country is that it's gonna hopefully get people to start paying attention about some of the big issues that are out there. This was from the State of North America Birds Report that Bird Studies Canada was involved uh, with many other partners in putting out last year. And it full on stated about a third of North America's birds are at risk uh, of extinction without significant change, all right? Uh, there, you wanna talk about disruption, there's a major disruption happening right here. And if this, if this isn't alarming, like it really should be, all right? Because again, this isn't just, you know, birds that we're losing here. This is telling us something about what is happening in your backyard, in your own landscape, right? We need to be paying attention to this. All right, let's bring that back to gray jays, all right? Gray jays, uh, so not only hit all these great boxes, tick all these boxes for being a good national symbol for Canada, they're also being impacted by climate change. Um, and what we're seeing now is as our climate is warming and as winters are warming and getting more erratic in terms of temperature, we're seeing uh, these birds are having a much tougher time um, feeding their young because of their primary mechanism of adaptation, which, which worked so well for so long, this food cache method of, of storing food to feed their young and to feed themselves, these caches are now spoiling because of this, right? Uh, chicks aren't getting enough food. Chicks are not surviving. Productivity is going down, and we're actually losing uh, territories of gray jays in especially the southern populations ac across Canada. So not only is a gray jay a great symbol for the, for the country, it's also a, a really great symbol for, for climate change in Canada and how we're affecting the natural environment, all right? 
Um, now, I, at Bird Studies Canada, I do, I, I've studied birds for a long time. I study forest birds. I also do a lot of education work. And I've seen firsthand, you know, the power of building connections to the natural world. I was really excited to see uh, uh, Les Stroud for the very first time speak uh, today. And I was so happy to hear one of his themes about connections, because I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Um, the, one of the biggest problems we face is our disconnection from the natural world. You know, you could link so many problems that we have in our society because of that disconnection, our lack of understanding of our impact on nature. Birds can fix that. You know, paying attention to birds can be that bridge. It can connect people to nature. That is the power and the beauty of, of watching birds, right? If you want to make a major change, you know, get people to start learning something about the natural world. Birds is a great place to start. This was a, a program uh, that I run at Bird Studies Canada uh, and have for, for several years. But this was actually one of the first ones right here, is where I got an entire grade six class of a local school and their parents down to the bird observatory to see uh, northern sawwit owls. That's what I'm holding here, a bird get, get banded. And many of these, none of these people have ever seen an owl before, let alone one in the hand. And these are quite amazing birds that you can find in Toronto. And uh, they've been described as the size of a beer can and the personality of a bank president. And, and if you spend time with them, you, know, you could see it in the faces. And I talked, this is years ago, I, talk, I still see these, some of these parents and some of these kids, and, and they still, the first thing they say to me was how transformative that experience was of, of connecting with a bird. This is why birds are so important, all right? It's really tough to conserve something unless we care about it, right? And I think across all disciplines in biology and natural history, you know, it's really tough to get people on board with conservation unless they have an emotional connection or they, or they care about it, right? Again, birds can do that. Selecting uh, a bird like the gray jay as a national symbol can help inspire that. Uh, at least to me, it can. And, you know, I work in the conservation field. And we are facing a lot of challenges right now. There's a lot of challenges. There's more species being added to the species at risk list every year on an unpre unprecedented level. And scientists and environmentalists alone aren't going to solve or overcome these issues. We need people. We need to engage Canadians and make them passionate about birds and about nature. That's how we're going to make a positive change going forward uh, for birds, for nature, and for ourselves. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much.